Hey there, it's uh, Steve, K2GOG again. Uh, it's been a while since I've done an SDR Angel uh, video, and I thought now would be a great time given that the new Morse code decoder has been released. So let's go ahead and take a look at how to actually get this set up. So first let's go ahead and look at what my environment is going to be uh, set up like. So we'll go ahead and make SDR Angel uh, in full screen mode. And so first things first, what are we going to be using to actually listen for Morse code. In this case, I'm using an RTL SDR version 4. $30, inexpensive, but it's probably one of the better inexpensive dongles with full coverage that also includes uh, the HF bands from uh, 0 to 30 megahertz. So that's what I'm using, and because I wanted the crappiest antenna I could think of, I've decided to take a 30-foot piece of uh, RG174 coax, and just attach it uh, with an SMA connector to the dongle itself. So really it's just a random wire. There's nothing else to it. I have it strung out uh, my window over here. And I wanted a crappy antenna because I wanna see how well the decoder can actually figure out what is being sent in Morse code. So again, nothing really fancy here. And I think that's what's really cool. And now let's get going. So. As a reminder, go ahead and take a look at some of my past videos if you're new to SDR Angel, but supposing you've looked at some of them in the Series 7 uh, release of uh, SDR Angel, you should be able to get to this point. So I have the SDR connected to the computer, and we have SDR Angel on. So we're going to go ahead and go look for the SDR. And again, you probably have already done this but uh, we'll skip over that again. Go back and look at uh, pre previous videos. So again, since we're gonna experiment with uh, decoding Morse code on the 40 meter amateur band, I'm just gonna use our mouse and uh, key down. Let's go to 7048 kilohertz. Probably a good spot to start. So we'll make a couple other little adjustments before we hit go. So we'll set the decimation to two even though I normally like to do it at one, but we'll do that for two for a reason. We'll set the bandwidth to uh, one megahertz wide. We're gonna turn the gain to, let's say 28. And now we take DC offset, turn that off. And now we're gonna hit play. So let's go ahead and make this a little bigger. So as you can see, I get lots of noise here in the 40 meter band, which is not always good, but uh, that's what I have to contend with at my location. So uh, the good news is, if you're looking closely at the uh, waterfall, you can see a signal in here. Right here, if you can see where the mouse is, uh, you can definitely see some Morse code there, and here, and here. But let's go ahead and uh, zoom into that, and give a much better idea. So that's how you do, you change the uh, decimation, so we're slowing up the waterfall. Now you can actually see what looks to be quite a number of Morse code uh, uh, based communications here. Um, very easy to highlight and you can probably visually look at this and try to decode that, but what fun is that? So um, let's go ahead and just change the decimation back up a little higher. Uh, so again, you can really see that this is like buried in the noise here. So first things first, um, we're going to talk about demodulators. So the new Morse code decoder, and I say decoder because that's what it's labeled as, it's not a demodulator. So you're not gonna find Morse code demodulator mixed in here as you would think, such as like FT8 is a good example, a radio teletype is another example um, in the amateur bands. So you're not gonna find Morse code in here, but if we wanna actually hear things coming out of our uh, computer speakers, we're gonna need to select a demodulator so we're gonna do sideband. So uh, let's see if you could, uh, if you hear that in your speakers, this is the default setting. Uh, you can hear something out there and you can hear Morse code, but it's like a really high pitch because we've not fine tuned anything yet. So we're gonna come back to this in a moment. But what, um, what we're gonna get into next is where to find the Morse code decoder. So you go up here to the top to add features, it's the little wrench icon, usually underneath the word preferences. Go ahead and click that. And um, here's all these different uh, features. These are things that are overlays, and I've covered this in past videos, but 
so here we have a morse code decoder or morse decoder we hit apply and now we have a new feature so the first thing that we're going to notice is in order to get this working there's actually some cool things that have been implemented and while this is a bad example um, we'll just keep this uh, around 40 meters so let's just take a quick look here so we have one receiver plugged into the uh, computer in this case it's labeled R0 because we have one SDR and so you'll see R0 now when we look at the demodulator we see it's R00 so this is receiver 0 and the first demodulator and same thing here's the spectrum scope receiver 0 and here's function 0 so this is everything related to zero device now let's just say as an example Maybe you have a friend who likes to spend time on the 40 meter band, but prefers to communicate in amplitude modulation or AM mode. So let's go ahead and add another demodulator as an example. So we'll do AM. I'm going to mute that. And while nobody has been known to do this, at least to my knowledge, we're going to add a third demodulator just to show you this uh, as an example. So we're going to add FM. It, I'm sure there's probably some audio files that would love to transmit an FM, but they take up too much space on the uh, 40 meter band. But anyway, here we have now three demodulators. So again, we have one radio. We're tuned to 7048, and all of them are tuned to the same frequency. So R00 is sideband, R01 is AM, and R02 is FM. So let's say, for example, if you did want to, and again, I covered this in past videos, if you wanted to listen to maybe some people using sideband on 40 meters, you can do that. If you wanted to listen to people at the same exact time on AM, you can do that. And if you wanted to, let's just move some things around again. There we go. So see how we have everything color-coded in stripes? We have red and yellow and green. If we use this function down here on shift frequency you're going to see that we're moving the am demodulator all the way up into the band we're not going to go all the way up to where people usually are using uh am but you get the idea so we can see at any point in time where we're moving things and same thing goes with uh with fm so you can see how i'm moving these around it's all nice it's all color coded so if you wanted to monitor multiple communications voice or data whatever uh, you could easily see where those are tuned to right in the band, and that's pretty neat. And you could also, as a reminder, you could use your scroll wheel on your mouse if you wanted to uh, zoom in like this. I'm just rocking forward on the scroll and rocking back. So there's lots of really cool things that you can do with an SDR Angel, but again, I don't want to go too far off topic here. The goal is Morse code decoder. But again, this is why... Uh, I wanted to show you multiple decoders. So getting back to uh, Morse, since we've added those, you'll notice that now we have the option to say, where do we want to decode Morse? So we can maybe pull that out of the sideband or AM or narrow FM demodulator. Now again, 40 meter band is a bad example, but let's just say, for example, if you wanted to decode Morse and let's say an example, 462 megahertz or 462575 is a GMRS frequency here in the United States. Maybe there's a repeater on that frequency and every 10 minutes it identifies itself with its call sign in Morse code. And if you do not have the capability to decode that in your head, you can use something like SDR Angel to decode Morse code. Or let's say for example, if you wanted to decode Morse code on multiple frequencies with multiple demodulators, you can do that so hopefully this is making a little bit of sense to you that you link morse decoder to a demodulator and the demodulator is what is actually listening to a specific frequency so hopefully this will make a little bit more sense but again you have to make sure that you set to the right demodulator in this case our target is going to be morse code in the amateur 40 meter band so we're going to stick with the side band and I'm just going to close these out just to keep things nice and organized. So again, we're left with three windows. We have the main spectrum scope, we have the sideband demodulator, and we have the Morse decoder. 
So there's a couple things that we're going to want to first do with uh, the sideband demodulator. So let's go ahead and configure something. So the first thing that you're going to want to do since we're in the amateur 40 meter band is move this slider down here to lower sideband. And we can leave these other, this other one on low cut right at the middle, but we're going to take span and we're going to reduce that to three. So that span correlates right here where you have over here at left, it's a zero, and here we have three. So we're looking at three kilohertz wide. And if you are uh, paying attention to the video, you can see that we've definitely centered our uh, receiver on some local activity uh, because we can see that there is a signal uh, right here. Uh, if you look really closely, you can definitely tell that this looks like the dots and dashes that we're familiar with in Morse code. And from a noise floor perspective, um, you almost can't even tell just by looking at the, uh, the spectrum scope up here. You have to look at it on the waterfall to really even pull it out. And let's just clean that up a little bit. We'll change this to 16 uh, decimation level so this way you don't see all the uh, solar inverter noise that I'm plagued with at my, uh, my location here. But you can clearly see that we've cleaned that up just a little bit and you can see multiple uh, strings of uh, Morse code uh, coming in. But let's go ahead and see what this actually sounds like. So we'll go ahead and turn the sound back on. And we're gonna turn on the automatic gain control just to clean up some of the noise. So you should be able to hear that. Let me stop talking here for a second. So you can definitely hear the Morse code in the background, and we're gonna we're gonna take a guess here as to uh, what uh, what frequency that we're hearing that at. To me, it sounds like maybe somewhere between five to six hundred hertz, but let's see if I'm right. So we're gonna go up here. We're gonna turn on Morse decoder, and what we're gonna wait for about a couple seconds. This is gonna start automatically pulling things in. And let's see what that looks like. So let's make the Morse decoder a little bigger. And again, we are set up on the Morse decoder on sideband, but we probably want to fine tune things a little bit. So let's go ahead and try to find uh, another signal here. So we'll just change the frequency down. See if we find somebody here. You can probably see that right in the uh, passband of the, uh, there we go. So around 7055, let's see who's going to be internet famous. So let's go ahead and uh, play around with the, uh, the filtering here. We're going to narrow things down, and uh, you can go ahead and play with this. Uh, why I like SDR Angel is everything is uh, a good visual understanding of what you're actually moving. So these sliders right here, you can see as I'm moving them, it's narrowing down where we will actually be receiving things. And so you can make these as tight or as wide as you want. Um, but again, the goal here is to see how well the Morse code decoder works within uh, SDR Angel. So we pretty much have this, I think, dialed in pretty good. So let's go ahead and take a look here and see what will be popping into the Morse decoder here. So for right now, this looks almost like gibberish, but the, the, the first thing that you gotta set up here is where you're gonna leave it sit. Um, in this case, it looks like we're hearing Morse code at about a thousand hertz. So we're gonna wanna change that so we could hear a little bit better. So we'll go down a little bit. And you can probably hear the pitch changing uh, if this is uh, picking up the sounds well in the, uh, the recording here. So we'll just let this uh, sit here for uh, another moment or so. So you can see we've made the, um, the pass band on here very, very tight. And up at the top, we can see here at pitch, uh, we're hearing this at about 820 hertz. Uh, the person who's uh, sending CW is sending at around uh, 20 words a minute or so. And um, the program, the SDR Angel software itself, is trying to do some predictive analytics and fill in some of the blanks here. And with most decoders, you're usually going to see random T's and E's and N's as some common characters, but uh, we can start to see that 
we're uh, picking up some actually uh, decoded characters here. So I'll just let this kind of play through here. And see if we can understand what this person is actually sending. And again, no decoder is perfect. You know, it'll kind of give you a general idea as to uh, what to expect with the uh, with a Morse code decoder, and you can fine tune this. You know, this was just done on the fly, super quick, just to kind of give you uh, an un understanding if I had to get this uh, set up. But hopefully, uh, this uh, this comes across uh, pretty well. I've been uh, pretty impressed. And again, this is a real low end uh, receiver with a uh, a very m poor antenna, and um, we're receiving signals really well into the noise floor given that uh, there's some local uh, interference that I have uh, from solar panels. So again, uh, hopefully this uh, works. Go have some fun with SDR Angel and, um, you know, let's see uh, how people uh, like the new decoder for Morse code in uh, SDR Angel. And we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching.